Sometimes Michael Broughton, I make quite large scale, rapidly executed paintings of very familiar interiors in and around where I work, around my studio. And after leaving art school, I drew from paintings. And you can use drawing as an, in, like an interpretive language to, to, to look at them to, um, and to understand them and try to relay them. And I draw them very much like I draw from like a, like a chair or something in the world where you, you enter into them and you describe and you're describing the experience of looking and seeing but never trying to, it's, it's, it's something a long way from a forgery or a copy where you're trying to, dis, I'm trying to disassociate myself in the making, it's very much relying on kind of responding to the visual stimulus of, of looking and recording that. This is a, an engraving, which is a transcription of Hogarth's Beggar's Opera. It's an engraving made by Blake and something I've been working, I kind of keep repeatedly redrawing and drawing, I think having a knowledge of the painting beforehand. It's got a sense of a, like a double mimesis, like a play where it's like Hogarth took it from life and made drawings and observations of life and of the idea and it exists in that form and then someone else made a copy of, like Blake's made the copy of the painting and it exists in this form and someone else can make a copy and each time it's different. It comes to presentation always differently and, and I think that's something that kind of inter interests me, not just in drawing from paintings or drawing from drawings, but in the kind of studio practice to kind of, I think the, it seemed like, like the, kind of like the finitude of consciousness that never knows itself entirely. So everything's always coming anew, however time, many times it's repeated or re-looked at or redrawn. So I'm going to draw from the, the, the Blake transcription of the Hogarth's Beggar's Opera painting. I'm going to use charcoal using a, a soft grade Faber Castell charcoal is it's, um, it's made from Siberian charcoal, so it's, it's as black pretty much as you can get, and it's quite has a kind of a permanence. So it's um, the willow charcoal. Often drawings get kind of blown away in the wind, or just you touch them and they disappear. Um, and also quite like the kind of the graphic nature of this. It's you, you can use it with blocks and areas of tone. You can smudge it, you can pull it, you can rub it, but you can also use it as a give a strong contour structure to the drawing for its, for its graphic potential. Drawing is it's, it's, it's like the first kind of contact with maybe thoughts and ideas. And I think that notion that you don't really have an idea independently of the making. So drawing goes from the very beginning through to the very end of everything I do. I mean, from the first tentative sketches of seeing something and then returning and drawing, maybe making more ambitious drawings. The drawings that operate in tandem with the making of the painting, whereas the painting fails to go back and remake drawings as the demands of the paintings dictate. Mm -hmm. So these drawings have this kind of very, they have this kind of teleological nature where they kind of point at something. They've got some kind of, not so much a function, but a, di a kind of directedness to them. And then sometimes drawing just a really, it's just this kind of, when I don't know what to do, it's kind of something quite recreational and low pressure. And I can just sit and observe. And, and then sometimes I make very finished drawings that don't, not part of paintings, they're fully, full images in their own right. It's got a kind of dialogic character where you're kind of just in this conversation with yourself or with the subject matter. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not independent of thinking, it's just like thinking privately to oneself, like a, having a dialogue with oneself about what you might want, might not want, what might work, what might be interesting. Um, yeah, and it kind of leaves this, there's a trail of this kind of thinking that lies behind maybe something quite finished for all their kind of the great techniques and execution, the kind of the glazings, or well, those Titians and those Rubens and those Goyas, those El Grecos, they're, they're kind of, they're powered by drawing and touch and mark and the way they, yeah, they're, they're really, they're full of drawing and handling and, and you can see that right the way through, through drawings.